the podium, your head coach, Kevin Sumlin. Everybody sound okay? No <coughs> questions. No questions today. Coach, you said you wouldn't know exactly you know, what was going to happen until you played that game. Now looking at it, how do you think overall the team did? You know, I, I think, uh, first of all, you know, we went back. You know, the old adage, it's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. You know, it's uh, once you get past um, the initial reaction of, of losing a football game, you go back and you look at, you know, what you could do better, whether you win or lose. But particularly when you, you lose a game, uh, you, you go back and, and try to assess, number one, uh, what we've done in the past. Number one, we assess uh, effort. And uh, in our estimation, after reviewing the video, uh, we were very, very pleased as a coaching staff with our effort on offense and defense. Uh, special teams, not so much. Uh, I thought our specialists, our kickers, did an excellent job, and punters. Uh, but our, our, uh, there were some things inside of those units that we, we needed to, uh, we, we weren't pleased there. We, we've, we've talked about that as a, as, a, as a team, addressed that yesterday, and that's something we're working hard on. Uh, the, the next thing is uh, execution, which uh, at times, you know, when you're, you're playing a, a close game like that against a good team, uh, sometimes it's it's uh, they have good players that can handle things, but there's there's other things that you can do better from an execution standpoint, which uh, in the first game or in any game, um, you analyze that we can be better in execution, and I, I think that cost us the football game. And then did we play smart? And uh, by that meaning, uh, did we did we handle uh, uh, the turnover ratio, which there were no turnovers in the game, which that was a huge positive coming in the game. Penalty-wise, we did not handle that. And so, um, you know, the two things that we talk about, uh, three main goals going in every game, play hard, play smart, and be physical. I thought we were extremely physical, um, and I thought we played extremely hard. Uh, the intelligence part of the game, uh, we, we did not. So, you know, when you're in a close game uh, and, and you have nine penalties uh, for, for 79 or 78 yards, uh, you know, that's, that's not going uh, to cut it. And, and uh, there's an old deal, I think, uh, we had Bill Polian in here. There's an NFL study that uh, penalty, every 10 yards, uh, they had a formula that every 10 yards of penalties was worth one point. So there's a lot of combinations into that, and I think our players right now, uh, after after talking about that, they understand the importance of, of uh, that part of the game also. And, and as I said, you know that was an emphasis coming into this year, turnover ratio and uh, penalties. And so we got one of them done Saturday, and, and really one of them, the other side, may have cost us the football game, which was another learning experience. Looking back on the tape, how would you assess Johnny's performance? I, I thought Johnny, uh, you know, for a a first start, first uh, for a freshman, redshirt freshman, but to start against a, a team like Florida, uh, a defensive team like Florida, uh, I thought he he did he he performed well. Um, I, I think you know the first thing you worry about with a new guy is turnovers, whether it's. Uh, um, uh, you know whether it's a quarterback, anybody who's handling the football, and, and not just not just him, but a number of our freshmen who handle the ball. You know, it, we we put Trey Williams back there as the opening as a kickoff returner, and and those guys handle those situations well. Uh, but you, you worry about ball security, you worry about decision making. You know, and and to that point, you know we've been harping on. It. I think everybody saw the difference between him in the spring. Uh, and, uh, and and in a game with and and, and things speed up when, when you play a game. You know, you look at both of those quarterbacks during that game, and um, neither one of them really took a whole lot of chances. You know, Driscoll took took some sacks and just hung on to the ball instead of throwing it up. Uh, and I think Johnny was a little bit closer to the vest too. And uh, but that that's that's something that uh, was a lot different. Than, than he was in the spring, and as experience comes, you know he'll he'll be able to sit in there a little bit longer, maybe go through and read things out a little bit more, look down the field a little bit more. But uh, from from our standpoint, and from um, you know he he goes he 
we have gone back and looked at the video. He understands where he can get better, and and I think that's the main thing to take from Saturday. You know, I, you know, after the initial reaction, as I said, you come back and look, and and uh, when you when you watch the video, and uh, you, you realize, you know what, um, when you're playing a top 25 team, here are the things that you you can't do to be successful, but also. Uh, there's a lot of room for improvement, and uh, that would be the concern. If there wasn't a lot of room for comp- improvement and, and that was the case, then it would be pretty depressing. But from, from that standpoint, uh, I think our team, and I think, I know our team sees that, you know what, we can play better than that. And uh, that, to me, is exciting. How would you assess the play of your uh, defense and defensive line in particular? I thought uh, coming into the game, my two main concerns, which I think were everybody's concerns, were our kickers, punters, snappers, and our defensive line. And you leave out Saturday saying, you know what, uh, our, our kickers made every kick, our punter, our net punt was 49 something, and our defensive line, you know, really did a, a, a pretty good job of containing their run game. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I thought, uh, it, you know, when you, you start a, a true freshman at defensive end and, and a couple guys that were, were concerned about their size and their, you know, their productivity from a, from a, uh, uh, the way our defense is set up, they're able to, to keep Jonathan Stewart clean, to be able to make 17 tackles and then to rush the passer the way they did without, you know, a whole lot of blitzing. Um, I, I thought that they did a, a, a nice job. And, and I think, you know, what's important is guys like, uh, you don't have to worry about DeMontre Moore having confidence, I'll put it that way. You worry about uh, some of these other guys. And, and I think, you know, Julian Obioha comes out of that game, you know, thinking I'm playing my first game uh, against Florida as an SEC game. And, you know, I watched him at practice yesterday. He's a different guy. He, he now knows, you know, you know what, guess what? I just started and played uh, 60 plays or 50 plays against Florida, and, and uh, you know, I'm ready to go. And, and, and that's one of the things, one of the steps that happens with freshmen, and I think our, our D-line can gain some confidence in that instead of being, hey, I don't know what's going to happen in our kicking game. Instead of saying, hey, you know what, we, we performed well, now that's the standard, let's go. How, much, how important is it for a guy like your middle linebacker, Stewart, to lead by example with 17 tackles like that? I think it's important. I think it also uh, it, it lends confidence to there's a reason that he's doing that. You can't make 17 tackles if there's somebody blocking you all the time. So, you know, I think that says something, too, about our defensive front. Uh, the, the ability for them to take up blockers, to to, to, to hold space, to, to do a lot of things, and, and – uh, um, you know, that, that all works together. It's kind of like a running back in, a, in an offensive line. You know, you can be a really good linebacker, but there's somebody all over you all the time. It's hard to make tackles. And, and I think for him to make 17 tackles, is, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's great for us and great for him, but that also says something about the design of the defense, and, and, and that means there's a bunch of other people doing their job. Coach, were any guys that jumped out to you when the lights came on that they really stepped up their game and maybe earned their way you know, more, more plays? Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, it, it's pretty much the way we've seen it in practice. You know, I think if there's anything, there's some guys out there that, uh, um, you know, from a personnel standpoint that we learned some things about that, that may, may not be ready to play. And, uh, you know, there might be some changes, particularly special teams-wise. Where, where there's some guys in coverage units that uh, that uh, you know didn't weren't quite doing what we think they need to do, uh, but as a team, you know I think uh, you, know, you go back and look at who played in the game. We rewarded the people in practice, uh, rewarded the people who were playing in the game who 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 practiced fairly well, and I think. Um, from that standpoint, you know, there's there's guys that got to get better. You know, there's there's no secret we've got to tackle better on the perimeter. We had young guys out there. You know, you had DeShazer and Devontae's first start. Uh, uh, coverage was pretty well. Gave up one one big ball, but you know, uh, one deep ball, which was a big play in the game. But uh, you know, we've got to tackle better on the perimeter, 
and in the league we're going into, the league we're in now, um, they're going to force your corners to not be finesse players uh, and cover guys, but they're going to have to be physical guys and, and, and they're going to have to tackle. And so that's a point of emphasis this week that, uh, um, uh, and, and we'll get some more guys involved. You know, that's a, uh, uh, we got a number of guys back there that are capable of, of doing that. And if there's one thing that, that we've got to improve in, I think uh, there's no secret that we've got to tackle better on the perimeter. I thought inside, you know, our guys did a pretty good job from a linebacker um, uh, D-line standpoint. But uh, on the perimeter, we've got to be better tacklers. I thought they covered pretty well. You know June and his staff from being at CUSA. Now Jason Phillips is there, so there's so much familiarity. Does that help with game planning at all or affect what you do? No, it doesn't. Just because I just because I know June doesn't really help me do anything, so he knows me too. Played them the last four or five years. Yep, this will be five years in a row. Well, now your former coordinator is coaching for them, so I didn't know if there was anything. Well, it, if, if it, there. well, it should help him more than it helps me. He's got the the spy. You know, I don't have anybody on his staff that works here, so you know that works both ways. You know, June is a June is a friend. I have a lot of respect for June Jones, and here's a guy who uh, has coached in the NFL. Here's a guy who's taken a non-BCS football team to a, a BCS bowl game. A guy that you know we would have to beat to win the West in Conference USA. A guy who's taken SMU to a a, a, a Conference USA championship game uh, from nothing, and 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 really done a fine job with that program. So. Um, you know, he, he June is uh, he's a buddy. I, I think I asked him the other last time I saw him that now he'll let me play in his golf tournament in Hawaii since we don't so I, since we're not in the same league. He said, "Well, we we still play each other, so I don't know if he's going to let me play out there anymore." But uh, uh, he, I have a lot of respect for how he does things and and has taken that program over from you know from a would they win one game or no games? Yeah, one and eleven to uh, win in the West and, and playing for a conference championship. So uh, you can't deny that uh, he's a good coach. He knows what he's doing. But there's, you know, we we played each other for this will be the fifth year and all that other stuff. Game plans are game plans. There's familiarity. But when you're in a league, you play it. That, that always amazes me because, you know, it, it, you play the same teams all the time. So that question can be asked every year. Anything though about preparing for maybe Marcus Hunt, their Estonian kick blocker. I think he had another yeah. blocked kick last week. He had two. He has uh, he's got 15 total uh, over the course of his career. Nine field goal blocks, which is an NCAA record. We're very well aware of him. Obviously, people here weren't aware of him last year because he blocked two here last year. Yeah, yeah. So we you know, we know we know very well who he is. There wasn't any shock to us. As a matter of fact, I was watching that on television last year. Um, and and uh, we were laughing about it, not laughing, but uh, I told Coach Poli on Sunday, uh, I said, have you have you watched any of their, we're going back over last week's video. I said, well, you're about to see the, the greatest field goal uh, PAT blocker of all time. He's like, come on, you know, we, it's, and then he turns on the video and, and goes right to it. He blocked two last week. So. Uh, the guy's got a, a great gift, a knack. They do a lot of things with him in there, and, and they understand it. 6'8", 275, uh, extremely athletic. He's a D lineman, too. So just uh, don't worry. I mean, this, this guy's a, a real athlete and, and a, a real weapon. Coach, were there any physical limitations with Kristen Michael in the second half after got two early carries and then none after that? Uh, none that I know of. Anything to the decision with any reason why he didn't get any carries after the first two of the second half? I mean, we got we got three good backs. I didn't see anything wrong with the other two guys running. They had one guy knock out a safety on a run, and the other guy had the longest run of the day as a freshman. So we're we're going we're going to rotate our backs. Would you discuss and that? health and and based on uh, health history, I think that's the smart thing to do. Kevin, would you discuss Zach Linda running back and how difficult he is to break down in the middle? 
he's extremely difficult to bring down. Zach Line is a is a guy who I don't know, he looks a heck of a lot bigger than two thirty when I see him playing. I I I I, I don't believe that. He looks closer to two forty five, two fifty. He's 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 run the ball on everybody. I mean, he rumbled up and down Kyle Field last year for, I don't know, 120, something like that. And, you know, the, the amazing stat on him, I think, is he is right now the third active uh, leading uh, score, uh, rushing touchdown score behind a pretty good player in Denard Robinson at Michigan and a pretty good running back at Wisconsin. And 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 so you know that's all you need to know. This this is a real running back and a powerful guy that can catch the ball. They'll hand it to him, uh, and then they'll turn around and throw screens uh, uh, and shovel passes. And he's a load to carry in the middle of the field. You spread people out, and uh, you know he, he all it takes is he, there's not going to be any arm tackles going to bring this guy down. He likes to play too. And he's not afraid of contact. Very, very impressive. It has been impressive since he's been there, and, and you know he, he's he's a uh, he's a real weapon for him. In, in a in a you know when you have a guy that 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 uh, is putting up a hundred and some yards a game, and everybody's paying attention to to throwing the football. That sounds kind of familiar, huh? They spread everybody out all over, over the place and get him singled up, running over people. It's it's pretty effective. Defense. They tend to force ten turnovers, seven of them interceptions. What were they doing exactly that rattled that quarterback so much? Just playing defense. Just playing defense. Nothing. Is that a, that's a that's a uh, that's some kind of record, I would think. Yeah. Tied Yeah. Ten turnovers. Yeah. Something I've never heard of. Um. But, you know, again, you know. Ball security is, is something that we stress, and, and uh, uh, we'll go into this week just like we've approached the last since we've been here. You know, like I said, I think the two things that, that we've tried to address daily, uh, one thing we got done, obviously, uh, and, and the other thing we didn't was penalties, and, and um, that, that's an ongoing process. Also, just looking at the stats, he distributed the ball well. I think he had nine different receivers. I mean, did you give him high marks for that? Well, I don't know if that's high marks. It's just kind of how we've always done things. You know, we've, we're have we going to play a lot of different guys um, and, you know, try to keep guys fresh. But, uh, you, know, we, you know, the better your football team, the better the teams that I've coached, uh, you, you've got more than one guy that's, that's pretty good, and and uh, so the better we are, the more numbers that you're going to get uh, of guys touching the ball. Well, you talk about Mike Evans, the way he went out there and was able to go up and get some balls and <clears throat> play the way he was. No, Mike has been doing that since we've been here. You know, here's another guy. This is his first start. He played one year of high school football, and uh, um, redshirted last year. Uh, he's very very raw, but you know, he's six four, six five. Big guy, uh, great basketball player in high school, tweener, you know, and which means when you're six four, six five, that means you got no jump shot. That's what that means. <laughs> so I give him a hard time. That means you're a post guy. So you know, it's what a, that, when you use the term great basketball player at six five, that means that's what that means. You can't shoot a three, and you can't defend on the floor. So. You play football, and, and uh, but what he does give us is a big threat. He can run, uh, and, and you know you, you look out there the other day, and uh, you know that's really the guy has played uh, one year of high school football, red shirt last year, and he's and there he is out playing against Florida and, and starting and, and playing well. And, I mean competing. Uh, you, I go back and watch the video. The receivers block like crazy on the perimeter. And, uh, and competed with those guys. So th that's what I'm getting at. I think I'm encouraged by, you know, the young guys and the old guys. You've got, you know, Easy and, and Swope and, and uh, uh, LeKendrick, but you've also got Thomas Johnson and, and, and uh, Mike Evans, you know, to look to in the future. And those guys, we don't skip a beat by running those guys in and out of the game. What do you see on film that minimized impact of Swope and, and Easy on Saturday? I don't know if it, it, compared to what? Just 
just, I mean, just, I know the 12 got a, you know, a few catches, but just didn't seem to have a lot There was a whole lot of people that got a few catches. Yeah. So it wasn't just the minimization of those guys. But those being guys that have been proven and played before. But they weren't playing in this offense. You know, I, I would say this, that, uh, you know, the opportunities that we had to do things, um, um, you know, you, you look at, at uh, you go back and look at, at the video, the, the, the chances to get them the ball. We get a missed block early on the screen uh, for a tackle. We get the ball to try to get the ball to swope, and, and guys were missing, you know, we had just a, a beat off here, a beat off there. Uh, we had some quarterback scrambles. And then in the second half, you know, the inability to, to really be able to catch up to the chains. You know, we had nine plays in the third quarter. That's it. It's hard to do anything with nine plays in the third quarter. So, uh, you know, that was a big factor. And, 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 and uh, you know, it, it, I think people don't uh, – when you, you look at offensive football the way we are doing it, the way we do it, um, we do look at a list and try to get people the ball. But in, in, in all actuality, and Sam, you know this from, from, from Houston – it's a progression read. And so based on your defense and based on what's happening, you're going to have some guys have big nights and, and, and some guys won't. What did, what did Trey Williams show you in the handful of touches he got? Hey, I mean, he's a good player. And that's what I think to answer Gabe's question, it wasn't uh, as much uh, Christian Michael as it was. I think you go back and look at at, uh, at uh, you know, Per carry averages, you know, they're all going to be right there. Uh, there were not one of those backs that we put in the game was not successful. And so, you know, Trey's a, a change of pace guy. He's, he's, uh, uh, you know, Ben is a, is a powerful guy, a, a solid guy, um, a up the field guy. Christian is a bigger guy that's got some, some wiggle. And then uh, Trey's a, a guy that's a completely different change of pace guy with a with, uh, really home run speed. So um, all three of them bring something to the table. All three of them can play. And, and uh, we're going to use all three of those guys because it's a long season. And, and I think just to answer your question, you know, with, with a guy who, particularly with a guy who's had some injuries, you know, we, he, he understands that. and. And I think more than anything else, we understand that too. Trey was an ankle tackle and going a long way. Too. Long way was. on his first carry. <clears throat> yep, that's that's correct. How important is it for you and your staff to have a recruiting presence in the Metroplex? And how much do these games kind of help that? Um, it's extremely important. You know, uh, I think we've we've uh, shown at this point, you know, what we're. Where we are in the Metroplex, you know, particularly uh, the Metroplex and Houston, and then uh, in East Texas, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, uh, you look at where we are right now, recruiting for 2013. Um, I think it reflects our, our presence in the Metroplex right now, just from a commitment standpoint, and Houston and, and East Texas, where we've got to get back into is East Texas. But certainly the Metroplex is a... Uh, um, uh, a big area for us, a uh, big area for really uh, this this area of, of the country, you know, and, and uh, the battle over the top players in, in, that, in that area is, is really, really stiff. And so, you know, playing there is a good thing. You know, you don't, you don't get to – I'll just say this, you, you know, it's, it's their game. We don't get to give out tickets. So – uh, the game's on television no matter what. So, I, you know, I don't know if playing there is that big a deal. Uh, it might be to the families that uh, of the recruits that we have there, but I don't know that what playing there uh, does for us necessarily in, in recruiting. Does that make sense? We can't invite recruits to the game, so it's on television. About Patrick Lewis adjusting to the tempo change, how do you think he did? I know he got so much attention in fall camp. Can you do it? Can you do it? What do you think? Yeah, I think he did well. I mean, we we had some false start penalties, which are concerning. Um, but uh, you know, we're, we're working through that from a tempo standpoint. I thought he did did very well. 
I thought that uh, you know we were encouraged by uh, it's a pretty good D line that uh, Florida has, and and I, I thought you know the tempo, uh, how he was able to snap, handle, direct, uh, do some things. Uh, uh, we're encouraged by that. You know he's a big enough guy. He's he uh, is strong, and you know for in a new offense for him to handle that the first. Uh, the first game right out of the box against some guys like that, I thought uh, I, I, we were pretty pleased with him. And I think he'll get better. That's a learning situation. You know, we've you had some false starts. You go on audible. Uh, even when it's quiet here on offense, uh, it's still pretty loud. And, and uh, you know, it, it can create some snap issues, you know, uh, for us. But, but uh, you know, he, Johnny and, and, and he have to be on the same page a little bit more. And that's what... You know, it's hard to simulate uh, simulate that kind of uh, uh, intensity and tempo in a game. And uh, we try to do that, and it will alleviate some of the snap issues. Um, and if we can do that, and, and that'll cut down on on, on uh, penalties. But I, I think he, I think he's done a, uh, I think he did a nice job. He's done a nice job all all camp. So he, I don't have to yell at him anymore about that. I just yell at him about other stuff. <laughs> Your first quarterback that's been this mobile that you can call the quarterback draws and stuff like that? No. I was here with a guy named Reggie McNeil. He's pretty mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gene, we'll have to go back 10 years or whatever to see you. No. The last, uh, the last guy was pretty mobile too. He just hurt a knee. I think Case scrambled and ran and did a lot of different things. So, you know, we've, we've had a bunch of guys. Over the course of time, that they could run, they just everybody just thought we threw it all the time. But they could run too, and they made yards. What's your assessment on the uh, type of quarterback Garrett Gilbert has been so far? This season? You know, I, I was I was talking about that. I you know I, I think Garrett's a good player. I thought he was one of the best uh, high school players I had, I had seen, and uh, everybody tried to recruit him for a reason. I mean, it, it, there's, there's no doubt. I thought he was an exceptional high school player. You know, people forget, you know, here's a guy who's played in a national championship game. You know, you, everybody's forgotten about that. And, and uh, so the guy's been at the highest level, knows what's going on, um, is older. Uh, he's moved into a new system. And, uh, you know, it takes some time to, to figure that out. I just I hope he... Uh, then figure it out all out completely by Saturday at Saturday afternoon. So he's 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 a good player. He he's he's gonna be you know as get better as time goes on. Uh, I mean, he he's been too successful um, throughout his career not to be. A couple more. Coach, getting back to the second half, you mentioned about the offense behind the chains. When you reviewed it, you feel it's more your execution that you felt you had the right plays called. That it just was a matter of execute more execution yeah. in the second half. Yeah. Coach, um, uh, new entrance seemed to generate a lot of buzz. Uh, can you kind of kind of tell us how that came together? At the end? <laughs> I was just, I just read a script. <laughs> you know, everybody acts like everything that goes on around here. I do. There's a bunch of people that work here, so, huh? I, you know, just, I didn't. I got enough problems to sit down and think about who's, how we're gonna, where we're gonna meet, and what time we're gonna do that. You know, it's it was a combination of a lot of people that said, hey, you know, let's let's try this, let's do that. What do you think about changing this? And uh, you know, so. We went with it, and uh, obviously they ran it past me. The, the I think it kind of got out. We walked it as a team a couple weeks ago, the Thursday before the Louisiana Tech game, because we have a really a mock uh, scrimmage day where we d go through pregame warm-ups, routines, how we're gonna, who goes out when, when the kickers go out, and so we took pictures that day. The what was that? Yeah, the Thursday before we had a uh, picture day, and then we actually. Time the walk. We had the the core out, roped it off, uh, put the drum line out there. They met us, and then uh, we did everything but turn the smoke on. And then they had the imaginary smoke, and they said go, and we all ran out on the field. And the players loved it. So um, it was amazing that it was kept quiet for that long. 
when you, you're dealing with the core, uh, the number of people who put it together, and uh, you know, 90 players. I was sure somebody was going to explain the whole thing to everybody before that. You know, but it was explained to me. There's a group of people that I, I didn't. Like I said, I got enough problems to sit down and come up with an entrance. You did, you did a good job of keeping your feet, too, didn't you? I was really close. <laughs> I was really close to uh, going down to, you know, and I, you don't have, there's, there's no motivation like knowing that there's 80 guys behind you and who will not see you in, in national television. Uh, it would have been ugly to get trampled in my first entrance. So we, we will reinvestigate that part. Actually, that's a, that's a good point because I, I'm, I was sure somebody saw that. Um, I'm, I'm a little less athletic than Demontre Moore and Johnny Manziel who were just jumping and pushing me over. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run out first anymore. A lesser athlete would have went down. lesser athlete would have went down. That's true. Between not being able to see with the smoke and then those guys... Uh, you know, I had some energy, and I thought I was running, but th th thank goodness they're, they're a heck of a lot faster and bigger than me. So uh, I will not be running out in, anymore in the front. That would be trouble if you were out running now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it would be. But I, that, that's going to change. But I, I think, I think the, you know, I don't know. I haven't got any. I get a lot of emails from people, who, but I haven't had any about that, that, that they were – it was a bad deal. So, you know, it created some energy in, in, uh, in the stands, created some energy for our players, and I think it, it was a great blend of, 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 of everything. You know, we didn't take away from, from anything. I think we added to it, and, uh, you know, we had a number of recruits that, who were there, and whenever I look over and they all got their phones out and their video and what's going on, that means that it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So, you know, I think we'll, we'll continue with it. Anything else? You called it the elephant in the room on Saturday, and of course, there's been a lot of talk about not being able to close out games last year. With that, if that had anything to do with this year or not, I don't know. But you, had, you, you just asked the question. You had talked to the team about it, though, all fall camp about addressing some of the problems from the year before. We talked about the conditioning aspect of it and the mental aspect of it. So, do you con do you do something different? No. Do you continue to talk about it? Yeah, we we continue to practice. Do you think it's a mental thing, though, that's, that lingers? I don't know. I, like I said, I wasn't here last year. I know from a conditioning standpoint, we, you know, there's no way Demontre Moore could have played every play but five plays in a game like that. And uh, you look around, it wasn't our team flopping around on the field in the second half. Right. So it's not, uh, that, that's not it. We, we didn't make enough plays to win the game. Our defense, uh, it gets down to this. Yeah, our defense... Um, Stopped, stopped, and gave us four opportunities to win the game, and we couldn't. That's what happened. Right. I just wonder if the, if the no, that's that's it. it. I, you know, I ask every one of them, "Is that what you're thinking about?" Because that's not what I'm thinking about. You know, we played one game this year, and I think our guys played exceptionally hard against a good team. And in a close football game like that. Um, you got to make plays at the end to win. And our defense made, had four stops. We couldn't move the ball. It turned into an SEC football game. Uh, maybe a first down, maybe not. A punt it. And field position changed, and, and, and we gave up one. So, you know, from my standpoint, um, I'm looking at it as one game and what happened in, in that situation to win the game. And, and, and from, from my standpoint, our defense gave us an opportunity to, to to win, and we we couldn't we couldn't get it done, and and so it all works hand in hand. It's not one thing, uh, but from an effort standpoint, and uh, uh, how we did things. That's why I said you know I think uh, somebody asked about you know what was happening. You know we couldn't we couldn't get it executed, and you know you, you got to give Florida credit on that too. They they played pretty good too. Since you brought it up, that flopping around, do you feel like that was Florida's conditioning or anything else? You were there. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs>